Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 67 being recorded for all of you that aren't here with us at this moment in the middle of May. Weather started to turn nice here. I just got back from San Diego visiting Fire Giant headquarters for the first time ever, which sounds kind of funny, but when you distribute a company, it matters less um, where, where everybody's at. It's nice to have a mailing address, though. Um, but of course, being from Seattle, it means I'm sporting a nice sunburn on the back of my neck because I couldn't remember to put sunscreen on every day. But, you know, whatever. It's neither here nor there. Uh, today we have things we wanted to cover, triage. Triage will probably be interesting because we've had a set of uh, bugs kind of back up. We skipped last week. There weren't that many bugs last week, but a bunch have come in more recently. And then Bob wanted to talk about the .NET Framework v451 and v452 eula thing that we're going to do and then as always we'll cover questions and all that kind of good stuff at the end but let's go ahead and plow through those bugs real quick since we have a bunch of them and people are probably wondering if we're still out here so do the website 14 is that right it is all right it's like, not like they went away while i was waiting no did not wait go away while i was waiting um whoa this is back this is old. I thought we fixed this. May not follow this error. Yes, with all those names. Oh, either this is not fixed in 3.9 or there's another issue at play. I cannot seem to isolate it in a simple project book sharing the following outputs. Non-working. Working. Hmm. There are too many custom actions. It's a self-defense mechanism. <laughs> um, it's always possible, I suppose. It could be that he's actually hit the list, the maximum number of allowed custom actions, right? Mm, I think that was beefed up pretty significantly. I, I want to say it's like 100. Um... Well, this fixed the issue for everybody that I've worked with. Yeah, it, it, to be clear, there's no, you know, there's no guarantee that it's related. Mm -mm. I don't know where the upper limit is. You know, according to the 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 rule, the fix in the original bug, it was you know sort order, which doesn't seem to apply. I mean, in the original, everything is in alphabetical order, no no problems, and the working one is also in working order or alphabetical order. As far as I recall my alphabet, anyway. C-I-I... -I, yeah, Unless, yeah, there's some length thing that we don't know about in there. But that would be odd. You know, it has to be unique within this many characters, because then you could have the no. That would have to be the I N. That would be awfully short. Yeah. Um. Okay. So he's trying to say that somehow this is tied to that, but there's nothing more about theirs, or there's another issue at play. Right. I, cannot I cannot seem to isolate with a sample project because the following between working and non-working. Yeah, because someone would have reviewed it. So let's assume that this is issue another issue at play. We resolve this and tell them to go open a new bug with more information about what's going on because this is just going to muddy up everything. And if we find out they're the same, we can tie the bugs together. But at this point, I don't know why we're focusing on the zip things you know, in order. We shouldn't be doing that. And tell them to use the latest Wix 310, and then maybe we add some 
can add some extra debugging information that explains stuff and then can slowly track it down. But we're going to need a lot more information than this to track it down. Okay, that was a lot of items. So let's assume there's another issue at play until we find out otherwise. So let's re-resolve this bug so we don't conflate the two issues together if they're not. Right? Let's instead assume that something's wrong with his custom actions. And we'll go from there. He's probably going to have to, he or she is going to have to provide us more information about what's going wrong, what's working and non-working and stuff like that. All right. So we just, we don't even know how it's failing. There's no log information, no nothing. Right. Yeah. Certain registry keys cause the linker to fail unless the linker isn't run as an administrator. Wow. <laughs> um, this one actually, strangely enough, um, I, I don't get the admin bit. Uh, but it turns out it's due to the trailing backslash. Oh, on the registry key? On the registry yep. key? Yep. And it's in some yep. ice. Ice 03. Yeah. Well, it's telling you what's wrong. Call them key, yeah. registry key. Kind of. Well, <laughs> it could tell you a little more about what's invalid. It's an ice, so it doesn't do that. Uh, yeah, so fine but this doesn't, it's not us in a lot of different ways. Well, it is. I mean, we're adding. Oh, we could catch the slash, right? Yeah, we could catch it. We're adding a backslash. You're right. Is the problem. No, we're not adding it, I hope. No, we are. No, they. I'm hoping it's just that we're keeping it. No, sorry. We're adding a backslash, not the backslash. Another one. Yes. I see. So there's a double backslash? Yep. Oh, well, that's. that's that's, That's right. clearly our bug then. Yep. All right. Cool. That I could see being an invalid registry key, a double backslash, or at least I'm treating it like an invalid backslash. Yeah, it works. I don't know why they're so persnickety, but it works for file paths after all. Um. Well, it's yeah. It's noise. Yeah. It's a warning. No, it's an error. I don't no, know. It's a nice error. Yeah. All right. It's fine. Well, we should not do that. So they have a workaround, and we should do better than that. Right. Deal. Using media template breaks smart cabbing and produces huge MSI. It doesn't no, break. No, it doesn't smart. break it. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I have three copies of 140 megabyte file. If I use media, it's 200. If I use media template, it's that. It's like, yeah, because it got split. So this basically should be... Media template should be smarter about duplicate files. Basically, smart caving is broken. It's not well, broken. It's not broken. Yes, this is a feature, not a bug. A um, and and we've talked their about media templates, their media template size bigger, and then maybe it would fit. But it's all luck at that point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. So it's a feature to have media template get smart about duplicate files and all that. Yep. Which would be cool if it did. Yes. So 3x feature? Yeah, I think it'd be a totally cool 3x feature. I don't think it would uh, break anything. Yeah, it shouldn't break anything. Yeah, smart change. cabbing. No. No, because we don't care. Yeah, all right, cool. Yes. Support for Inno-based installers and burn. Yeah. Uh, this is more about uninstallers, right? Yeah, it is uninstallers, but yep. Yeah, I think I thought we had another bug on this already somewhere, but probably very hard to figure that out. But yes, I agree. Something like that probably should do at some point. 4X, 3X could be a place too, maybe. 4X is good, but... Yeah, I don't see this happening in 3X. I don't either. 4X is good. It's, it's pretty big. Yeah. Burn, 3x assumes that installed detect only. Yes, so the change was 4.0 only. Yes, this sounds familiar. I do believe Sean has flushed it out. Yeah, I remember this one. Yeah. That's my comment in the second block there. Um, it, it's, it's bad 
bad blogging, but it's not. Yep. It, it doesn't cause bad behavior. So. Uh, yep. So this is a dupe of that bug. Okay. Which was fixed in 4.0, where we can make those kind of breaking changes and things. Yeah, that's fine. V6 properties. Um, I saw this pull request. Did you? Oh, um, yes. I took the. Th no, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. Yep. I was responding. Um, I took the three. I would take the four if I didn't. I because it's as I recall, it was a duplicate. So I, was, I usually do I was, that. Oh, okay. But you didn't take the four. You didn't. Cause I, I saw it. I don't recall. You okay. did not because I saw it today, and I was going to okay. ask you if you're going to take the three. Um, take the three, and I'll cool. do the four as well. Oh, sweet. That'll save me one more pull. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. Do what I can for your review queue. <sighs> well, it's brutal right now. So, um, It's very hard to identify missing packages during a modify. Uh, this is basically there's a prompt for the container before there's any clue about what the container is supposed to give. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah. It'd be nice if it did better than that. This post, I, mean, yeah, I went and looked at this post, and it basically came down to they weren't returning retry on the results. So they're saying, hey, I set the source, and then letting the berm continue to fail with, hey, I can't find the source. It's like, well, okay, I didn't find it. Uh, so, yes, once you set retry, you can actually change it. But it is annoying that the logging doesn't tell you which file you're missing from the, that it, it's going to end up being found in the attached container. So, yeah, it would be great if we improved the logging on this. 3x. So that's a great feature for 3x. Yep, I agree. It'd be great if it did. Failure to open. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> um. <laughs> what just happened? Oh, it's the underlines, right? It's got to be the underlines. Oh, that's yeah. That's copy and paste from a message box. It's got to be the underlines. That's funny. Windows is not marked down aware. Mm. Oh, yes, I remember this one. Um, uh, this one is a votive bug. No way. Yeah. Um, but it's actually a votive bug I think we can fix. No way. I know. It's shocking, right? Um, the, right. I'll actually be able to read this bug now. Well, that, oh, my God. That was brutal. <laughs> All right. Uh, actually, the error message here is is pretty good. It says these things have the same good, and it turns out they do. I don't know if that was legal before, or if it, nobody cared, or if nobody cared. Yeah, in, inside the guts of uh, Visual Studio, this is obviously Jeff 14. So I don't know. Maybe they care now, um, but. The GUID is specified in, in an attribute on the classes with the names given right in the error messages. So um, I'd be willing to take this in 310 okay. for an easy fix. Plus, you have Visual Studio 2015 somewhere around, so you can actually verify that it might work. Well, well the big issue. problem is I have to figure out how to build this thing in Vote. I have to figure out how to build Votive. Uh, that's right. You have a hard time doing that. Well, yeah, right now. Annoyingly, we have only support for Visual Studio 2010 for building Votive. Oh, yes. Anyway, good luck with that. <laughs> Bootstrapper repeats itself load. I think, yeah, I just took the pull request for this. I didn't know there was one for 310 as well. Um, so, yeah. The bootstrapper repeats itself to load itself, and I know Sean just sent these, so. Yep. It's cool. Um, so I will assign this to Sean. That sounds great. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll review the uh, review. I already looked at the pull request. It's like a one-liner. Yeah, it was very straightforward. Sure. Pretty good. Cannot set column attributes with, col with value blocks. It's less than interesting. <laughs> Um, this is actually a bug in Wix 4. Oh. Oh. Um, and okay. It's it's due to, uh, well, uh, th that number is uh, uh, integer not set or whatever the right. 
name is. Um, yeah, I was trying to clean up a lot of this mess. Yeah, you can just give it to me. Huh. All right. Unless you've already sorted out the exact issue if you went all the way down. I didn't get all the way down. How did this get assigned to you? Did you assign it to yourself looking for it? I did not. Oh. It, the, the bug was exposed because of the loc change that I made. Oh, so someone decided to give it to you to be helpful? And I, and I didn't want that kind of help. Yeah, okay. No, I just I knew I knew it wasn't me that triggered the change, right? Because uh, that particular loc change didn't involve attributes. So, square brackets are legal file names, but are used to denote burn variables. That means the value of Wix bundle original source is set to a file name like that. Formatting install won't work properly. Either it replaced by the value missing. Well, yeah, no, the problem here, I remember seeing, I just mentioned this on the mailing list this morning, I think I saw this come in, is that we need to, like, not multi re, you know, go through and resolve, multi resolve these variables or something. Yeah, but what if someone were doing it intentionally? Well, manufacturer. Yeah. Manufacturer is a common one. Or there's another variable inside it? No, no. Using using the using a variable inside a path like manufacturer or you know Wix bundle manufacturer whatever the bundle equivalent is then they will have to resolve that right well mm. I'm saying so right saying now the, the current it does people? resolve yeah 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 no I I agree that I think we have a problem in three X. The alternative is to what? To escape them such that they're always valid when we we basically say, we're, that's what this is bug is saying, that we always escape them. So that as soon as we bring a folder in that we know could get escaped, that we put the things in correctly? Uh, do, do, do we actually have escaping? I hope it's the same as MSI. As horrible as that is, it should work. Might be worth a look. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't recall escaping coming up before, so I just haven't seen it. Um, yeah, this is actually a bit of a pain, isn't it? Sean answered, yes. Good. Oh, although actually, I guess my question is more, is is there an escape character? Is yeah. there, you know, backslash or that god-awful MSI stuff? I, I hope we didn't go that route. I am pretty sure we did, to be consistent. Oh, that would make me sad. Don't perpetuate the evil. Um, mm, yeah, I don't think that's what we did. I think we perpetuated the continuity, which of course has, you know, implicit level of evil in there, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see backslash. That's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. If incompatible with MSI. <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't I don't know what the answer here is. We we can't I think we have to continue to support variables and paths. <laughs> and as Phil points out, we're kind of stuck now. We can't we can't change that behavior in 3x at least. And I argue even 4x is kind of bad. Um, but if we had backslashes, then we can say, well. Here you have a workaround, although you have to set Wix bundle original source yourself, which I'm not sure you can do. Cut the built-in. Yeah, sorry, I was more thinking. So again, I'm I'm thinking of the people who who would put manufacturer into a path in their bundle separate from Wix bundle original source. Oh, I other, see. Other built-ins. I'm thinking of 
user to find, and maybe that's... Then that would say, yeah, you have to resolve it yourself. If you want to resolve it, you have to resolve it once, which is what the one installer tells you to do, right, with the whole property. If you want to have a variable inside a property, you have to resolve it. Right. Yeah, that's true. This is... Burn does a bit more. Yeah, no, Phil, it's not just an issue with this variable. It's anything that could have a path in it or anything else that could have, you know, some the value of the square bracket that we end up resolving multiple times. I don't have a good answer for this. Yeah, I don't have one either. Other than saying brackets and file names are kind of weird. Mirror variables, so there's always an escaped variable. That's crazy. Duplicate all of our variables that are strings. Well, all that contain brackets. <laughs> Not much better. Yeah, which ones are those? Oh, yeah, you'd have to... You'd have to track every time there's a variable being created or set. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, Sean, I don't like that one much. What if you have variables with that name already? Or... Or, um, no, with the escaped name. Built in, a built in name with the word escaped on the end of it. You could do it in four, and you could run into problems doing it in three. Although, if you start your variable name with, you know, the beginning of any of our built ins, you're kind of asking, especially with the word Wix in front of it, but not all yeah. of those are Wix in front of them. Um, it also won't help you with the ones that, you know, just doing some escaped ones. You have to think about the ones that get set via, you know, searches, registry searches or, you know, whatever, directory searches. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. I don't I don't think this can work for only built-ins. It needs to work for more than just built-ins. There we go. More than just built-ins can hit this problem. No, the most consistent solution is to only resolve once. That would avoid the problem. And that will force people that want to do your suggestion of having a manufacturer to set their own path, their own, their own thing. Yeah, but Sean, the problem with path variables, it doesn't solve Bob's case where it's like, cool, I'm going to put square bracket manufacturer in here. I want square bracket manufacturer to be resolved, but I don't want square bracket, you know, from the file system, close square bracket to be resolved. It basically means you have to resolve only once. Yeah, I could live with that.
there can't be that many places where we resolve multiple times. Because Wix bundle original source, I, it must have the original value in it. I wish we had a log file. Must have the original value. And I can't imagine we lost it in the beginning. And when we saved it, we wouldn't save it formatted. Sean, was this from Stack Overflow? No, there's a mailing. I'm not something to wish uses. Okay. Yeah, I think Sean's right. It's not a matter of how many times we do it. It's just we keep digging in. Wait, that's what I'm saying. We have to quit doing that. <clears throat> or we provide a depth whenever we resolve. An install command has to stop at one. Oh, man. <laughs> Basically, everything has to stop at one. Which means the the recursive depth is bad. Sounds like a bug farm. Wow. Well. What about? Um, oh God, I don't know if I like this at all. What about an option that? Uh, does not replace a not found variable with blank. No. You're just waiting for someone to have the word installed in there or something. Oh, God. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you need a one. <laughs> you're like, why yeah. does it turn into one? <laughs> it's so weird. It's going to turn to being so. I mean, it's it's semi common now. It'd be nice to have it now. No, it's not just for original source. It can happen for any path, anything that gets a path in it, including registry keys or really anything that gets a path or any a square bracket inside it. It's not hard to imagine how it happens in paths, file names and such. Well, and. <laughs> And it's arbitrary paths is the biggest problem. Yeah. Well, it's any variable, really. I mean, it's any variable that ends with a square bracket in it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could create a narrow scope thing. I mean, I thought about that. We could say, well, we know that this is a path, therefore we should escape square brackets when we get set. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, because then you'll, you could end up with an actual variable. I'd rather escape it when you wrote it. Like, when we set waste bundle original source, go, oh, hey, you have square brackets in here. Let me escape those for you, because clearly you meant those to be that. But then we have to know that it got source from a path and things like that. So really, I mean, this almost is like, this almost needs another variable type, or at least a flag on the variable that says, don't do this. Right. And and it's not a variable type. It's a, well, I guess you could it's, say it's, this. It's, it's a flag on the variable, yes, I think. Yes, escaped. Or you could say, well, no, I guess it would only be strings. No, could be numbers. <laughs> I guess you could do it in numbers, but I don't know where you get them from. strong in case we would have a mix of square brackets from the path and burn variables. 
Oh, like square bracket manufacturer along with square bracket foo. Yeah, that I agree with that. I don't know if you would end up with a variable that is both that. Yeah, I don't. Well, know it happens. It, well, okay. First of all, brackets and directory names rare to begin with, right? But again, now you have an arbitrary path from a registry search that tells you where to install your plugins. That's right. I this, this is what we need here is a literal string. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what does C-sharp use? At or R? No, that's Python. At. Um, the at sign. Not the at Right. It's, it's, a, it's a string that you're, yeah, right. Yeah, right. No, it was, it's C++ that uses R. Or is it D? Damn it. I get them confused. Anyway, um, they, they all have one. It's like here. Do not do not preprocess this string. Right. Just use it as is, and that's kind of what we're talking about here. We need a string that is not further processed after it's been set. Uh, not further processed after it's been set. Correct. So when it's used inside a format string, it's not itself formatted. No, we could just we could just escape it as we set it. Oh. Oh. Well, no, that's a little bit weird, because then you'd have to unescape it when you got it back. That's a little nastier, but yeah. I don't know which is worse, creating a new type inside the the variable system for literal or escaping strings when we shove them in when we know that they're they're supposed to stay literal. Probably creating a type is safest. It's also backwards compatible. Uh, at least we could do it for certain things. We, if we added a literal type to burn, then we could set it on a few things that clearly never would have worked being non-literals, like Wix bundle original string. But the built-ins, we could go and mark them all literals. Right. Because clearly you never intended to get a square bracket you know, from a directory for the, for the bundle original string. Like That's just insanity trying to work, make that happen. <laughs> User, yes. please, place, please place the setup XE that is a burn bundle in a folder called foo square bracket, the variable you like replace that you're going to provide us on the command line. No. <laughs> like, uh, no. And if they did that, um, I, my sympathies are low. Um, so, yeah, that says we create a literal. I think that's what that says. I think that's probably the fix is a literal type. Fortunately, I think that's actually possible, right? Because we store the types on them. Yeah, they're all variants, though. Yeah, but they have types on them, right? Or no, we just do coercion between everything, don't we? I think. I think that's true. Whoa. Oh wait. Oh wait. Now I'm confused. I don't know the no, answer. No, I think we store the types. I have to go. Look. I haven't looked at the variable system in a long time. Well, I yeah. think it, it means that the result is that we have to. Right. Now that doesn't <laughs> mean that you can't format a literal. So you you could take a literal string and shove it through the format string and get back a formatted value. I don't think we're going to stop you from doing that. Because in the end, it's just a string. We don't know whether it's a text or a literal. <laughs> Uh, strangely enough, we don't actually have the type today. Um, oh, right. John's saying what I'm saying. Where do we store it, then? It's just a variant. I thought you said the type is stored in the variant. No? Well, variants... Vari oh, God. Right, right, right. But when we're formatting, aren't we formatting a variant or are we formatting a string? Oh, Uh, the variable, not the not the variant. Yeah, all right. So this is non. Yeah. Right. It's no. another bit. And we could. I mean, yeah, it's, it's another, another bit, bit, right? Well, Hidden, and persisted, said. and literal, like you said. Literal. Yeah. yeah. It's just a flag on a string. It's a type of string. Or, or, or a number at that point. 
Uh, how would the number happen? I'm just saying, if you if it was a number and you... Well, no, you're right. It shouldn't happen ever in a number. <laughs> now, could it happen in a version... I don't think so. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't uh, think it, it would work today, so I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm less worried about that. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, and I don't care that much. Numbers, we'll just do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we'll do the right thing. When it comes down to that, so I think that's the fix. Is literal. Ugh. It's that, or we only resolve depth of one. I'm not really thrilled with that one because that doesn't match what you normally want. Uh, Bob. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm not in favor of the depth either. I prefer this literal concept. Damn it. Why do I have such good ideas? Can't help you there. Yeah. Um, happens less for happens more rarely for me. I was just about to be insulted. Um All right. Um yeah, let's take it. Um Is this something we have to expose? Not necessarily in 310, but I think we should in 4. I'm I'm thinking I'm well, I'm wondering, can we get away with with not exposing it to bundle authoring. So you well, you want to do a search. Oh, I see. You're going to, uh, if, if we limit it, if we limit it to searches, is that enough? Or built or built-ins. You need it for searches. And that could be all behind the scenes. Yep. I'm just. I'm. I'm thinking of of you know limiting the exposure in 310. Sir, I, I'm certain you can do it in 310. In four, we could decide later. Well, Sean, I'm just thinking if if we don't expose the concept, we don't have to change That's true. any of the linker. Yeah, you don't have to try to compile the linker binder. Not to have to change the compiler. You don't have to change the compiler in the binder. It's you don't have purely to internal. Everything, everything is internal to, to the engine. That's right. Because the engine processes all the searches. I, I don't it, think it's it a saves big you change. That. It saves it saves you changing the core tool set. You just have to change burn. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> that too. I mean, yeah. I agree. I think we should expose it in four where we have a little, you know, bigger risk appetite. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I like it. I, I, yeah. Plus, we can prove it works in three and right prove the concept, <laughs> and then if it, then grow it in four to be more useful or more yeah. exposed. <laughs> right. Cool. All right. I don't know if you want to do this bug. You want to morph this bug or what you want to do, but whatever. I'll let you decide that. Which do you want? Do you want to morph this bug, or you want to kill it and move on with a different one? Oh, um, yeah. I'll I'll at least rewrite the title a bit and comment and the body about what we're going to do. Yeah. Right. 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 Title, feature, comment, and I think it'll probably be good to go. Yep. Woo! -hoo! What happened to click through? Click through's dead. Wow, that's not a bug. Oh, there are links on the page. Those news items. items. Or the news items. <laughs> From 2005, I say we leave them there for history. <laughs> yeah. Is there an alternative I should be using? Burn? So. Um. I mean, you can do it all through burn. So. I mean, honestly, click through is what drove us to focus on burn. Really? Mm -hmm. The fact that we needed a real bootstrapper to get click through 
working well was always kind of like, a, you know, the bootstrapper is really the bigger problem here. So, I mean, the rest of it all it did was set up a major upgrade for you, and I think it generated the atom feed for you automatically. Right. Sorry, I'm I'm having to go go back a few years to ten. Remember, click through. Yeah, right. Ten. So yeah. Um, not a bug. We can right. make that one go away. Not a bug. In the preprocessor support. In the preprocess support, fun to find return true if variable x is defined. Ugh. It's not currently easy to define a preprocess condition which includes a block of code. If A or B was uh, unless both A and B are defined. Well, why not do, oh, you want if and if def. Yes, true. With similar feature of defined X function will allow more complex conditionals to be included. Okay. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't want more complex conditionals. I don't either. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, this could go into the future. Four X. Yeah, I definitely don't want this in three. That's 4X. too much. I don't care. Use the preprocessor less. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For eight, Phil. <laughs> hey, look, you've already you've basically written it. All right. So, a serious a serious service pack uninstall issue. Okay. Requiring original source. That's a bummer. Install SP1, hotfix SP2. Okay. SP2 removes the hotfix, supersede the hotfix somehow. And it caches some files from SP1. So when you uninstall SP2, it's trying to put the hotfix back and it's not putting the files back. Mm. Um, so MS IMSP is doing something automatically that Wix is not doing automatically. So there's probably some setting, which I won't know off the top of my head. To do what? I, I'm still. I'm... <sighs> so it looks like you install MS, your MSI, then you install SP1, and it caches a bunch of files from SP from the right. MSI. Then you install a hotfix, and it caches some files from the SP1. Then you install SP2 and it caches some files from SP1 and the hotfix, presumably. Or no, and it removed the hotfix. So maybe it superseded the hotfix, so it removed No, it removed fix. SP1. Right? No. Install SP1 it in, in 10 0, 0. The hotfix created 10 0, no. 1 0. SP1 created the, the RTM cache. Yep. Hotfix created the SP1 cache. Yep. And the SP1 cache was removed because presumably SP1 was removed. Install right. SP2 doesn't say. Uh, well, yeah. It doesn't say. Um, yeah. So, there's some difference between what their authoring is doing for MSI MSP versus what Torch of Pyro is doing, which right. I guess wouldn't surprise me terribly. Uh, well, yeah. That... <laughs> Lots of things are done differently. Right. This is a a bit of a case of, you know, I built something with Wix and I built something with Install Shield and they don't behave the same. Well, there are if the patches. Many different things that means. <clears throat> yeah, so this yeah, this boils down to 
trying to walk through all the possible differences between MSI, MSP, and Torch and Pyro. I don't know how to do that in a bug. So we so we tell them for support, go talk to Wix users, and they're going to have to diff the, the difference between these two. It's not clear really what it boils down to. It's not clear it's yeah. a bug. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a bug. I mean, there's it, probably there's some configuration difference. It's a patch. That's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so this boils down to support and diffing, and I think that's. I don't know off the top of my head how you would actually diff to MSPs. You got to extract the transforms and look at uh, those. Well, edit them, look at their config, their different configuration settings and their properties, and then apply them to two different same MSI and see what they do and see how they're different. And figure out what bit is the important bit that's not being set in MSI MSP. Now, if that bit can't be set by Torch and Pyro, well, that would be a problem. That would be a bug yeah. feature. Um, tracking down that bit with this amount of information, I'm not going to be able to do it myself. Yeah, no, I, I can't picture it. The problem is, you're, this is probably not a difference that's going to be visible when the patch is applied. Agreed. It's a difference I, I, in, in patch metadata. Yeah, right, but can't you open the patch directly? Uh, yeah, no. but you don't you don't get ever get hardly anything. Mm. Okay. I mean, you get some. You get some. I shouldn't be quite so negative about it. You do get some, but it's. Not, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Um, but yeah, it's it's worth it. It's certainly a place to start. So let's do that. But yeah, you need to do that more. These will all be going away soon. Um, sooner, sooner or later, yeah. Sooner or later. Cool. Dot .NET Framework EULA thing. Bob? Yes? Um, I'm sorry. Did you expect me to talk about this? Um, well, yeah, the whole how we design it. I, what do you want to send from the client to the server kind of thing? Okay, right, right, right. So my understanding is, well, I can actually reinforce my understanding by looking at the code, can't I? Um, I think we just send a URL to an, F, to an FW link, and the FW link on the other end uh, uses you know, the headers to figure out which is the user's preferred language and sends the appropriate uh, 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 EULA file back based on that. So it you picks the EULA based off of whatever it can figure out from the user's request, not I based off of the, that's true. Not based off of anything in the client bundle or client machine. I believe that's the case, yes. Cool. So it's a matter of saying on the web server, we think your locale is set to this, so we're going to give you this uh, EULA. And creating a mapping between that and that. All right. <laughs> Sounds straightforward. Sounds like a fun thing to write. Shouldn't be too bad. Part of the hard part is figuring out all the different ways that web browsers can identify the user locale and um guessing the appropriate you'll have to give to them on the result of that. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. But, yeah, because it's just this is going to get routed through a browser. Yes. So it's whatever the, you know, that's the user agent that can be very, very different. That's correct. All right. Oh, that'll that's, be fun. That's the thing to learn. All right. Cool. Okay, so we'll essentially, you know, we can decide whatever this, the 
right URL is, and then plug that into a uh, NetFX extension. Right. Yes. That is the fix, is to put something in the NetFX extension. Yep. URL somewhere to wixtoolset.org that says, hey, I'm your friendly URL that you thought you were looking for. Right. Cool. That sounds actually yeah. pretty straightforward. Yeah, I think so. Since we're going to base it all off the browser and not uh, off of anything in the bundle. Yeah. Which I yeah. think is completely well, this way, usable. Yeah. We don't have to change Wix standard BA. We don't have to change the bundles. We don't have to worry about local strings. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. the worst case is that you can get a EULA in a different language than what the bundle is shipped in, but, you know, whatever. That's what the user's machine is set to browse right, to. Right, right. Yeah, we, can, we can look at what the uh, um, yeah what uh, the Microsoft FW link thing does I if we're concerned about that. We can keep feeding it <laughs> languages and go, what if I'm this language? Right. What if I'm this language? What if I was this language? <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, uh, and we want to do this only for 4.5.1 and 4.5.2, right? 4.6 will have its own... Yeah, yeah, I don't want to do this for things that already have the right answer. Yeah, okay. So, no just... Uh, We're only going to put ourselves man in the middle for those things where they drop the ball. Right. So. All right, that works. Do that. Uh, yes, Jacob, it's just... It's the EULA link for, from the prereq VA. It's not just the language-specific EULA. It's the fact that the prereq VA only shows a hyperlink, and the NetFX 451 and 452 don't have EULAs that are accessible online, or at least the way that prereq VA expects. Because that would be useful. Right. Cool. Anything else? We're close to our high end of an hour. I'm not sure if anybody else has got other things going on. Um, next week we can maybe talk about Wix 3.10. Yes. Uh, yes, Phil, I do have that. Yep. It is still sitting right there. Somewhere out there. No. I'm looking at it. <laughs> no. okay. Anything else? Anything else? Wow, full hour. A lot of bugs. I thought there was going to be a little more discussion on that service thing. I thought for sure you're going to make some sort of complicated, like, you know, I don't know, uh, what did they call it? Oh, man, I had a good joke there. Now it's gone. Never mind. <laughs> it wasn't at my expense. Well, you know, what was the stuff that you used yeah. Vizdals for? WS star, right? You know, some gigantic WS star with a message and a body and an envelope that you have to ship back and forth. No. Sorry. No. Old dead technology. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> JSON. That's what we definitely have gotten. <laughs> you, uh, you just want to throw some jQuery in there for the fun of it? That's a client side thing. It doesn't make any sense at all. But if we could, no, no I'm joking. <laughs> all right. Oh man, too funny. All right, I think that's all we got this week. Um uh until next week, I think we're all done here. So, we'll call it good. We've got an hour of stuff that means the notes then up on Fire Giant will be nice and long. Actually, yeah, they probably have to be a little bit longer with all those bugs we covered. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, all right. Well, I think we should Get to that, and until next week, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.